Welcome to the Grim Leftover Show with Grimnir every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern on reallibertymedia.com and rlmradio.xyz. Yeah, baby, it is Monday afternoon here, Monday evening, depending on where you are. Uh, June 22nd, 2020. This is the Grim Leftovers Show, episode 76. It is the final episode of Grim Leftovers. Yes, I'm not going to do Grim Leftovers after today. And today's won't actually be like a normal Grim Leftovers either. However, before anybody gets their uh, panties in a bunch... <laughs> I I still plan on doing a show on Mondays at this time. Uh, it's just not going to be the leftovers anymore. I'm, I, I I I don't know. I'm kind of I'm kind of I I just you know, I don't want to go through and read all these old stories anymore. Um, I, I you know it's fine. I I'm good at it. I know I'm good at reading somebody else's news stories and such and and picking them apart. Um, in the manner that I that I like to do, uh, but uh, yeah, I think it's time. Seventy six episodes of Grim Leftovers. Yeah, that should be plenty. That should be plenty. <laughs> so I, I don't know which what direction I'm gonna go with with this program after this, but um, I'm gonna go or or not this program, but whatever program, whatever I decide to call it, I want to do something uh, more uh, more conceptual. Uh, rather than this, you know, here's this news about X, Y, or Z, and and then uh, let me tell you why they're all messed up and why they're all wrong. Because I, I think most of you all know why they're all messed up and why they're all wrong and that they're lying to you. And, and I, I, you know, I do enjoy picking apart their uh, their faulty language and their faulty directions they try and send you in with their propaganda. Uh, but, you know, I got Fricker's Ball still for that. Uh, to do plenty of that on, uh, and uh, I, I, I was thinking, okay, you know, these stories, I, I get these stories, these old stories uh, that I didn't have time for uh, on Freakers or that my, myself and the Moose Girl didn't have uh, time for uh, there, and if they weren't important enough to get to, then maybe, maybe, um, uh, you know, that, they're just not that important. But I want to do something more, you know, where I could like pick a individual topic and and, uh, and 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 go go through it, just using my own idiotic thoughts or not idiotic thoughts, depending on how you look at it. Um, <laughs> and I was I was thinking this morning when I got up, and I'm thinking about the show, and it's like, yeah, I don't know, I've, I've kind of I've kind of reached a point of uh, what I'd like to call peak apathy. <laughs> Meaning, I don't care about nothing no more. None of this stuff, everything they, everything you read, everything you hear, every, everything you see, it's all nonsense. It's all garbage. Uh, people keep on, uh, you know, spewing up, oh, they're so angry about this or that or the other thing. Yeah, you know, uh, really? Because uh, you look at the stuff they're talking about and, and they're talking about Meaningless crap, just totally meaningless crap. Uh, uh, fighting over, uh, I should vote for blah. No, no, you shouldn't. Uh, uh, that, that's 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 really that's not really a good direction to go. Uh, and and so there's there's more, more mo better mo better things to be talking about. Um, <laughs> better directions to go. Uh, and I don't know that I have the. Uh, the mind to just uh, spring, uh, spout out information about whatever uh, for X amount of time. So it may not be uh, where I've always been with with uh, this show. Uh, I've always done uh, tried to stick to strictly one hour show, or on Freakers Ball we do three hour shows. So I don't think I'll have like a a, a time set uh, for for whatever the new show is. Uh, that that I want to do. Uh, Christine says, uh, talk about good subjects. Yeah. 
That's a good one, Chris, Christine. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let me say hi and howdy to the folks here in the chat. Um, <laughs> let, me, let me say, uh, we got, uh, oh, anyway, if you're listening in the chat, hi and howdy to y'all. But if you're listening somewhere else and you're not in the chat, come on over, jump on in. Um, uh, we got, uh, what, 14, 14 tuners in right now. So hi to you all, you all on our, our real uh, rlmradio.xyz or uh, wherever else you may be tuned in from. Um, but howdy to the people in the chat there. We got the Beatle and, and myself. Oh, Barman, come on, Barman. You don't need mention. You don't. You don't listen to me. We got Moose Girl and Kate Anti and as Modius Asmo, Charles and Tony, Circulo, Miss Chloe. Hey Chloe, how you doing? Uh, uh, damn Van Meter, uh, Flash and Free enslaved as uh, Java Doctor, Meester Meisterbrow, uh, Rob Works. Hey Rob, uh, was, did I see that bubbler pop out? I don't know, man. Uh, yeah, the mighty bubbler. Uh, Rome's or trust no one as he uh, pretends to uh, be now. You're, you're still Rome's, man. You could be trust no one all you want, but you're still Rome's. And we got the Vanna and Weather Dork Box. Mr. Vin E. Farmer Vinny. Yeah, brother. How are you? Uh, Woodman. Hey, Woody. Yeah, I'm live. Yeah, I'm live. Uh, Phantom in uh, CC66. Christine. Hey, Christine. How are you this evening? Hopefully better than you were earlier. Uh, another Chloe. We got two Chloes here. We got the cyborg Ian Noodle E E man and Sim Frumpy. I am Lone Frog. Hey Frogger. <laughs> JJ's uh, Kiss Matt uh, Pontos the sock puppet himself. Yes, the sock puppet. Uh, S L C Mikey. He's now Mikey instead of just Mike. Huh. Uh, Walter, aka Solvenir. The holiest of Roger and Zippix. Now I'm get I'm getting I'm getting some suggestions here in the chat uh, about stuff. Uh, it's possible I could do, you know, um, <laughs> like uh, Sock Puppet says. Maybe I could share content about things I've experienced and learned from over the previous days. Uh, it's possible. Yeah, that's something. Uh, Grimmyocracy. <laughs> Nice, Kate. Uh, yeah, I'm live. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, let's see here. Interviewing different folks. You know, I've uh, never really been an interviewer. I, I could uh, uh, try and interview people, but, uh, you know, um, I, I, I don't know where I'd get them from. I, I, don't, I don't know anybody that would uh, want to uh, sit here and be interviewed by me, uh, asking them questions and then calling them dummies for how they think. <laughs> Well, anyway, before I go on, and let me get a sip of water here first. Before I go on, let me tell you about my little excitement that I had today. Uh, yeah, I was down there at the uh, post office here in Moriarty, and uh, and 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 uh, I'm like uh, the second person in line or whatever. And right in front of me, in front of me, there's this old guy uh, there, and and. Uh, and, and he, he's, it's his turn. He goes to pick up his box of stuff that he's going to ship, and it's sitting up there on the counter. Uh, and he wanted to move it over to the other counter, and he tried to pick it up, and apparently something happened. He was too weak. He, he couldn't he couldn't deal with it, and he started shaking, and and he started leaning, falling backwards. And, and I went in and swooped in there and grabbed him and and, and uh, helped uh, save him from, from hitting the floor. He, he was going down. He was going down hard. And he was a pretty good-sized guy, about my size. Uh, uh, and, yeah, he would have he would have uh, he would have definitely cracked his head on that on that uh, tile there. Uh, so, anyway, I asked, this guy, he was old. Like I said, he was, he was you know, 80 plus, 80 plus in that range. And, uh, anyway, so I... Uh, Got him, got him back up to his feet, you know, because uh, I kind of let him, I, 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 I grabbed him and kind of slowly let let him down down to the floor uh, there. But uh, yeah, he would have he would have definitely uh, busted his head open on that on that floor, and that would have been a mess, you know. He could have got on my shoes or whatever. Um, <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. No, 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 no. Uh, a anyway, so so I helped him up, and he's like he he couldn't like hang on. He he couldn't stand anymore. He was like. His whole body was like quivering and shaking, and he's, uh, I let him get to get into the doorknob where he could hang on to the doorknob, and uh, then I, you know, helped him get his. Uh, it was a pretty good sized package. He had twenty, twenty five pounds. I don't know, probably too much for the old dude. I don't know. Uh, 
And uh, anyway, so I, I and he had this, he had this one of those freaking masks on, man. And uh, I, 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 I told him that mask, that mask is messing you up, man. You're not, you don't, you're not getting any air. You're breathing that shit over and over. You, you probably got uh, carbon monoxide poisoning there or something, man, or carbon dioxide anyway. <laughs> you know. Uh, any, anyway, I don't know if he could hear me. He was hard of hearing. The guy was. Anyway, so I helped him get his stuff over there, and then the the, uh, the uh, lady, the the lady that works there, Marilyn, um, she's like, "Oh, can you help him ring out and stuff?" Because she she knew he couldn't she couldn't really hear, and and, and he was he was he was just not stable standing there. So so I helped you know helped him ring out with his card and uh, uh, pressing the buttons on the little machine there, and and then. Uh, and then after uh, he was done, I just gave him my package, and she just prints out a receipt and gives it to me. But uh, then I helped him out to his car, and he was because he was like, "Ooh, uh, wom wom wombling, wombling? Is that a word? Wombling? Side to side." And so I said, "Hey man, go ahead, put your put your arm around my shoulder here, and I'll, <laughs> I'll walk you out there." And uh, I got him out to his car, got him in there, and and, uh, and you could tell he was frustrated. You know, he's. Uh, wombatlin, maybe that's it. Um, uh, anyway, but you can tell he's frustrated. You know, he was kind of like an independent dude, um, and and uh, not. Uh, he he could tell he was not happy about his situation being in the condition that he was. Um, I told him take the mask off, but he didn't. And, and he said, "Oh, so if you got some medicine for you, because he had he said, yeah, if I stand up, I get all." Got a little woozy sometimes, and and I said, "What?" Well, because he had that bad blood pressure, and uh, anyway, I got him in his car, and he got it started, and I was like, "Good luck, man. Good, just don't don't run into anything. Don't <laughs> pay attention. Go go get your medicine, whatever it takes." Uh, any, anyway, so I, that was uh, it was exciting. Yeah, I was uh, I was I was a little uh, yeah. Anyway, so that was my. Uh, non-standardized trip to the uh, uh, post office there. Uh, yeah, yeah, the thing is, though, see, R Rome's points out here, you can't be wearing masks if you have poor oxygen blood pressure to begin with. The thing is, though, he's like 80, and they, they keep telling everybody, well, anybody over 70 is going to die from this shit, so you better have your masks on. So he's listening to the idiots from government, you know, um, <laughs> yeah. yeah, right, right, Fluffy. Uh, so, I, I mean, I, I don't know. It's, it's kind of a catch-22 there. If you put the mask on, you're not going to get good oxygen. You're not going to be able to breathe well. But if you don't have it on and you believe what they're saying about the whole corona nonsense, uh, then, then you're going to have the mask on because it, 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 you don't want to get it and, and die from that. <laughs> so... Anyway, oh god. Um, so I don't. I had. I didn't. I didn't uh, line up any stories for today because you know I, I. I just didn't want to. I didn't want to do the whole. Uh, I don't. I don't want to do that news reading stuff anymore. Um, yeah. Oh, she suggested he get it up. Well, I didn't think about that, Rome's. That's a good idea. He'll get a get an oxygen mask instead. Um, although he didn't seem like he was having. Uh, he didn't seem like that was a part of his problem. Uh, he, other than the fact that the little N95 or whatever it was was uh, recycling his nasty breath back into his face, um, <laughs> it's just wrong. Uh, anyway, so you know, I, I don't know. I, I, I look at the stuff going on out there, uh, whatever it is. It's, it's this 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 whole Corona hoax, Corona balona, the the, the fake virus. Uh, and whether or not you believe the virus is true, uh, you just look at the various numbers coming out about all kinds of various things and all of the inconsistencies of the stories uh, from the beginning of this until now and how everything has taken a pretty much a 180 turnabout uh, f from all the various topics, all the various areas of it. Uh, and... and <laughs> and I wonder, I think uh, to myself, uh, well, and sometimes uh, out loudly, out loudly via my fingers, uh, either in the chat or uh, on the Twitter or other sites that I that I visit to. Uh, but 
uh, you know, in the very beginning, first they said, don't even worry about corona. It's not even coming here. It's not going to be a problem. Even if it does come here, it's not going to be a big deal. And then, and then apparently it was already here or it came here, something along those lines. And they said, well, don't worry about it. It doesn't, it doesn't transmit person to person. And it's just not that big a deal. And even if it does, it's only minor. It's, it's not, it's not really going to do anything. And then all of a sudden, oh no, everything's freaked out. We all got to lock everything, close all the businesses, close everything down, shut the, uh, off the, the, the economy, not just here, but around the entire world. Shut the whole thing down. And, and, and then they were telling you, don't wear a face mask. Don't buy a face mask. Don't get a face mask. Don't think about a face mask. And now it's, oh, you have to have a face mask. Yeah, you got to have one. If you don't have one, then, and, you know, depending on where you live, that's a big no-no you get. But, of course, I, I live in a state here, New Mexico, where they have mandated, quote, unquote, mandated that anybody out in public has to have a mask on. But I'm telling you, it's maybe 10%. Of the people I have a mask on, most people don't. They, they are listening. Uh, so, was, so when they go from no mask to okay, maybe a mask to all right, everybody now has to have a mask. Uh, insanity. And, and then they got this all this uh, social distancing six foot rule, which is so totally meaningless. Six foot rule, six foot from where? From what uh, I well, I generally speaking, you're right. Meister Brown says uh, I'm in a liberal state, and yes, uh, this is a very blue state. If you look at uh, who's in public office here, uh, however, that's only because of the big cities uh, being Albuquerque, Santa Fe, uh, whatever. The big cities are liberal, but most of the state is very rural. And so most of the state is not liberal, uh, geogra ge geographically speaking. Uh, population speaking, uh, there's a million plus people just in the city of Albuquerque, greater Albuquerque there. Uh, but, and there's only like two million people in the entire state. So everybody's like stuck in that one tiny little area uh, there. And then uh, Santa Fe's got about 400,000 up there. Uh, and, 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 you know, all the capital capital cities of every state are very liberal. Um, that, I don't know why why that is or how that got to be, but it, but it sure the hell is. Uh, so, <laughs> anyway, now I lost my train of thought. Where was I talking about? I don't know. Um, <laughs> oh, about all, all the inconsistencies, just in this corona stuff. Um, and the six-foot rule. It, it's, it's crazy. It's meaningless. Um Six feet from where? From where I'm standing right now. So if I move, if, I, if I'm standing on point A, and I move six feet up from where I was just standing, is there nothing left from what, what I was like just that air that I was just breathing right where I was to six feet away? Or, or is, are there remnants, remnants of, of the, my breath still in the air six feet behind me uh, from from where I was. I Obviously, there are. It, it, it just, that's just standard, normalized thinking. Yeah, I realize, realization that <laughs> just because you move doesn't mean the air around you has moved. Um, <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's craziness. It's craziness. And now, uh, with uh, the... the Okay, some of the uh, the deaths and hospitalizations are way, way on the decline. It doesn't matter because now it's all about cases. How many cases? Of course, uh, they're, they're talking about the, the states are opening up. States are opening up. And, and now that they're opening up, a lot of the businesses, many of the businesses, not all the businesses, but many of the businesses are requiring people coming back to work to be tested. And so when all their employees start coming back to work, or depending on where you are, 25, 50% of your employees, which I'm not even sure how a lot of businesses can operate at only 50% capacity, uh, you know, depending on what the hell they do. But um, 
So, so they, those people coming back to work, a lot of their employers are saying, all right, well, you're coming back to work. We're going to give you a test. So now that they're opening back up and they're giving all these people tests, and then they're saying, look, okay, some of these people show positive uh, uh, for the Corona Bologna. But do they really? As, as Hal Anthony points out uh, quite emphatically on his show, um, behind a woodshed on S Sunday afternoons at 3 p.m. Eastern, uh, noon o'clock Pacific. They don't have a test. There is no test. The test is, is, is messed up. It doesn't even work. Uh, uh, the, this thing they're saying is a test is not really a test. So anyway, now they're testing all these people, going back to work, and they're doing tons and tons more tests. And, and so the numbers, you got more cases because some amount of those tests are going to come back as positive because the test is, is a hoax. It's a messed up thing. It, it doesn't work. You can test one day negative, next day positive, and the next day after that negative. It's just, that's just how it is. So the, the test results, those showing people positive, is absolutely crazy. It, it means nothing. It, it's, it's not good information. But instead now of trying to report on how many people are being hospitalized or dying from this stuff, they've switched over to the, the number of positive tests coming back. And, of course, all, all those people that are being tested positive are what they call asymptomatic. Oh, well, and they were telling you all along that asymptomatic people were the most dangerous folk out there because they were killing grandma by being out there uh, in the public. And... <laughs> And now they come out a couple of weeks ago, or maybe it was just last week, they came out and said, yeah, that asymptomatic stuff, we were wrong. They're, they're, the asymptomatic people don't transmit this this virus. Oh, really? Okay, but then again, is it even really a virus? I mean, uh, it, <laughs> so that, that's the thing is, uh, is it a virus or is it something else? Is it something else? Even, even if it is something else, and the thing they don't ever want to talk about was that it's not natural. It was created in a lab somewhere. Uh, it, it, it was manufactured. <sighs> Let me say, think about how to say this here. Um, the Department of Defense contracted out a lab in Canada to create a particular virus, a very deadly virus. They wanted a very deadly virus. And the Canadian lab, you know, wanting that money, said, yeah, okay, we'll, 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 we'll do that for you. We'll do that work. What the hell do we care? We're, we're just scientists in the lab. We got to do something. And, and you got money for us. We'll, we'll work on this thing for you. And they did. And, and so this Canadian lab uh, cre created this virus. And then uh, because the Department of Defense also had uh, huge interest and uh, money put into uh, the bio lab over there in Wuhan, China, uh, and they they really wanted to have it start there. Because, uh, you know, viruses come from China. Isn't that the thing? Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 so they shipped that deadly virus over there uh, to the, the lab in China. Now, there's some stories about how it got out of that lab in China. Uh, some people were saying, uh, and, and it seems highly plausible to me, uh, that, that, that it was put into a cooler packed with dry ice and put uh, in front of a, a ventilation fan uh, so that it would blow out amongst the area around that fish market uh, there that was a few miles, a few miles from the biolab, uh, and that's how it got out and started spreading. Now, as far as I know, there have we have there's never been a patient zero on this thing. We haven't found who was infected first, because if they did it that way, it would have infected a lot of people all at once. Assuming uh, it, it is what they say it is. Uh, and then, the, and then there's the mutations, which you're not really hearing about the mutations anymore. Uh, 
Uh, but in the beginning, uh, they were saying, oh, okay, well, we can't really nail this down because there's mutation A, mutation B, mutation C of this. And, and I, I forget how many different variations on the mutation they came up with, but, but there was a lot, um, a, a, a lot of uh, variations on that. Uh, am I making any sense here? I am just talking. And so I don't, I don't even know if, if, if what I'm saying is getting through to you folk out there listening in the chat. Um, <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, anyhow. <laughs> uh, so, so now, now it's, you know, uh, the, the stuff is winding down or going away. I, I know you're hearing me, but am I, am I making sense? Um, <laughs> okay, good. Thumbs up to Moose Girl. It makes sense to her. All right. <laughs> good to know. Good to know. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, so I just kind of like recycle thoughts in my head that I've had for, well, at this point, many months. Uh, well, thank you, Chloe. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, appreciate that. Um, so, so now that this stuff is all winding down, and even with all of the openings, and oh, which by the way, apparently, uh, as you all know, uh, the virus will get to you if you are alone on a boat on a lake fishing. You, you will, you will, you will. The virus will come and get to you out on the middle of that lake when you're all by yourself away from any, everybody, and, and they will come and grab you off that lake and haul you in. But if you're in a group of thousands marching down the street and burning and smashing and setting things on fire, the virus is afraid of you at that point. So you can go ahead and go out there and, and protest and, and, and riot and smash and burn and loot, and, and that's all good. That's all perfectly fine. Yeah, you don't want to have a motor on the... Well, motorboating is a whole different story that we're not going to get into right here. <laughs> oh, man. All right. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> so, anyway, now, now comes, or is coming... Or they're warning of, been talking about for quite some time, the second wave. Uh, and, and so, you know, so whatever fear you may have had in the beginning that has since diminished over all, over these many months of being locked in your home and beating your head against the wall or uh, doing your best to keep yourself occupied. And of course, without any money coming in, because they closed all the businesses. Meaning you have no work. Meaning uh, you have no income. Uh, and, well, unless you got some of that that government uh, money coming in for you. Uh, if you uh, were able to get your unemployment, uh, which some people were, yeah, but a lot of people weren't. And I I've I've seen them here in the chat uh, that they they put put in for unemployment every way they possibly could, and they shouldn't have had to. It should have been simple. I was I was furloughed or I was laid off by my job uh, because of the corona and having to close things down. It should have been simple. Here's my form. Boom. Here's your money. But that's not how it worked. Uh, as most insurance companies work, they don't want to give you any money, even though you've been paying them for years and years and years. Uh, so... <laughs> So anyway, so now, of course, with with everybody, and, and even that government money is going to run out at the end of next month. Uh, so uh, if everybody doesn't get back to work by then, which it seems unlikely that they will, and a lot of the businesses didn't even survive, so there's no work to go back to. Um, so, so now you have... Um, evictions and foreclosures and uh, uh, going 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 massive and wide and and what's that gonna do what's that you're gonna start putting people out on the street well now we already know that street people uh, they they have no protection uh, from any kind of virus floating around in the air out there they can't stay six feet apart uh, they they have no way of washing their hands and and protecting themselves from any anything that's out there floating around so that it's it's like a self 
prophecy there that, hey, people are going to go out, uh, uh, be, be shoved out on the street because we shut down their... And by the way, uh, and I know I'm, I'm bouncing around a little bit here, but when the government uh, put together their $6 trillion uh, thing, where did it go? Where did it go? Well, without any kind of debate at all in your governmental chambers, the Congress uh, there, the, the Senate and the House of Representatives, without any kind of problem at all, 90 percent, 90 plus percent of that money went directly to the big banks. And then they were hemming and hawing for a long time over giving you any little slice of cash to help protect yourself from their actions of shutting all the businesses down. And they finally picked the number of $1,200 somehow. I don't know where they got that number from, but absolutely inadequate, you know, uh, for you to be able to even pay your bills, to buy groceries, to uh, pay your, your rent or your mortgage, your car payments, your insurance, and on and on and on, your, your list of stuff that you needed, whatever you were getting, two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000 a month, from from your from your working job, uh, and here's twelve hundred bucks, twelve hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah, couldn't even go into a bank exactly. So, like, oh, but so so, <laughs> and now they're 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 talking and hemming and hawing over. Well, we'll give you a little. Maybe we might give you a little more, but we don't know. The banks still need more money. It's it, it, it's absolutely insane. Uh, what what they're what they're doing uh, as far as and I normally I would I would I would not advocate for the government giving anybody any money at any time and they should not do that because they should not be taking your money in the first place. Yes, taxation is theft, absolutely, but they shouldn't be taking your money uh, in the first place. Not that any of that six trillion dollars. Uh, came out of tax money because, as you know, tax money doesn't even pay the interest on the freaking debt. Um, <laughs> so that, everybody thinks, oh, my tax dollars are going to pay for this, that, and that. No, they aren't. No, no, they aren't. <laughs> Your tax dollars are not going to pay for anything other than to give some money back to the Rothschilds that printed up the fake money in the first place. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, let, as it has permission. Uh, just quit stealing the money. Quit stealing the money from people. You don't need it. Uh, just just have them print you more money, government, and you can use the money they print to pay back the interest on that debt. Oh! <laughs> so anyway, it's just second wave crap is coming along. Um, <laughs> and, and, and I have a feeling that whatever it is, Whatever's going to happen with this, uh, this will be a more real virus where more average folk will wind up dying from this uh, because, well, I think that was the initial goal, uh, was was part, part of the initial goal. There, there were many goals to this global shutdown, lots of goals. Uh, one of them is to get you used to being... To, to to jump on a moment's notice to do whatever the government said you needed to do. Uh, and people did. And people not only did, but they, they become... <laughs> and, and, and I've seen people talking about the uh, different different things like the Milgram experiment. I would put more more of this as the Stanford prison experiment uh, than, than Milgram. Um uh, because in the Stanford prison experiment, if you're familiar with that, and I've talked about it on here before, but in that, they said, okay, you group of people, your prisoners, you group of people, your guards. The guards have control o over the people that are prisoners. And, and, and the guards quickly became violent and vicious towards, in this thing, they all knew they were part of an experiment and that none of it was real. But the, the the people that were playing the guards uh, quickly became violent and vicious uh, towards the people that were prisoners, uh, and so now we have this thing here with the contact tracing and re reporting on other people. 
uh, reporting on other people. And, 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 and so they came up with the now, oh, the Karens, yeah, the Karens are out there telling people what they can and cannot do while they're not even doing it themselves. Uh, the Karens came from a certain woman uh, that was out there with no mask on, yelling at people that didn't have masks on for not having their masks on and not being six feet apart and da 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 da. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, they got that. And then now there's another name. I forget what the other name is. Uh, uh, another woman's name that they came up with. Somebody else that was out there yelling at somebody for not doing things that she wasn't doing in the first place. Uh, Frumpy points out that for sure there will be some real deaths this time. They have to or folks won't buy it. Yeah, and I think it's going to be a, a more widespread Cynthia, yeah, I think that was it. Cynthia's, all right. Thanks, Chloe. Um, <laughs> and and so and, and we still I I still see people talking about the about the uh, the polit politics stuff, whether this guy or that guy or some other guy uh, is is the right person to put in this office over here. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Right. Wait, what? Sock Puppet is telling me. Now, Keaton is coming back, and guess what? He's going to wear a mask. Keaton? Angela Keaton? You talking about Angela? Uh, well, he, obviously, that's not a he. I don't know who this Keaton is. Michael Keaton? <laughs> Beetlejuice type stuff? I, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, <laughs> all right. Oh, Batman. Okay, Michael Keaton as Batman, not Michael Keaton as Beetlejuice. I like Beetlejuice. I didn't really care for Batman. <laughs> All right. I saw I saw the post earlier today, Chloe. Oh God. <laughs> uh, if I had to have a favorite Batman, it's Adam West. Um, <laughs> just because it was so dorky. <laughs> it was totally dorky. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so we have all that to look forward to uh, coming up over the summer months and into the fall. And you can bet around September, October time frame, uh, just prior to the selections, um, uh, you, you know, <laughs> they're, they're really going to ramp this up. And they're somehow going to say, Trump did this. This is all Trump's fault. He's the one that told you don't wear a mask. He's the one that told you to go to rallies and go back to work. Go about your business as normal. And so when people start dropping like flies, which uh, the, these 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 uh, controller types, the ones that are in your government, the ones you're out there voting for, uh, they like to have people die. They want people to die. They love people dying. And, and so as you start dying, uh, many of you, uh, and, and probably people we actually know uh, will will get sick and die uh, on this second wave uh, because it'll be a more much more virulent, uh, more real uh, version of this virus. <laughs> uh, yeah, it, it's such a, it's such an act, such a game. The whole thing is it's, it's just so manufactured and easily seen through. And then they roll in, they, they roll in the whole Black Lives Matter thing. Now, I don't know if the whole George Floyd thing was an act or not. I mean, it, it looked real from the initial tape, but then you started to look a little closer into it. And as has been pointed out many times around the interwebs, um, the guy that they were loading onto the gurney, there, which they should never have been doing in the way they were doing in the first place, uh, uh, was not the same guy that was in the earlier uh, video there that, that showed George Floyd there with hair. He had hair on his head, and the guy they were putting on the gurney had no hair, and by the way, um, no legs. He had no legs, uh, which looked kind of like a, one of those dummies that you use for CPR. Um, uh, I guess I, I don't know from what I've seen. I've, I've seen a, a variety of different things about that, but 
But the way it came up, as fast as it did, and how much stuff has happened from it since, and is still happening from it today, uh, depending on where you want to look at it from, okay, the thing was about police brutality. Police brutality. And they tur quickly turned it into uh, racist, Black Lives Matter, Antifa, riots, burn burn everything to the ground, uh, get rid of all the cops, which I'm in agreement with. I am in agreement with get rid of all the cops. The cops only cause problems and, and, and create violence. Uh, they take the most peaceful situation there is with no cops, and they bring cops in, and suddenly it's totally violent. So uh, <laughs> I am not in favor of them. Uh, I, I would be in favor of a uh, independent... Uh, privately hired uh, security patrol for certain things. But if you want to look at uh, the, the police brutality, which I do, uh, because uh, they do that, that that's, and they feel that they are doing the good thing. They think, well, some of them, some, some of them are just total scumbags, but uh, a lot of them, they think that they're out there doing good things, but they know that they can't say anything about their fellow officers who may be doing something bad. Because if they do, they will get fired. They, 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 they will be a target. A huge, big time. So you can have six, six cops standing there and one bad cop beating the holy crap out of somebody. And the other cops just stand there and, 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 and say, well, we can't say anything. We can't do anything. We can't stop them. We can't report them. We can't do anything, or all of us will, will wind up being thrown out of this place. Which, wouldn't you want to? If, if you were part of a group uh, that did horrible things to people all the time, would you not want to be out of that group Re regardless? Uh, I would. I mean, I, if, if I walked into a place and I thought they were all there for the benefit of the public, all for the good of, of everyone, and then once I got in there, I realized that, hey, these people are shit. These people are horrible. They do bad things to all kinds of people. And 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 regardless of whatever law is written, and this is the key factor here, uh, the key point, um, whatever law is written by whether it's a you know a, a city council, a mayor, a, a governor, the, the 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 state the state government or the federal government, the cops feel like they have to enforce all of those laws to the letter. Although they're not actually any of them are laws, they're all codes, but that's a whole different discussion I'm not going to get into right now. Because they're looked at, they're thought of as laws. They are given the color of law uh, by the way they are spelled out and told to you and handed down. Now, <laughs> you're right, Donna. Uh, anyway, but, but the thing is, if you didn't have all of them people, all them, all them scumbags in the in the governments creating all of these laws, and a lot of them don't even come from those; they come from from committees that are created. Uh, people like the CDC or the the FDA, uh, the Department of Homeland Security, they create guidelines or rules uh, that are not laws. That these people are not not elected in any way. They're appointed. And they create stuff, and now that's called a law as well. So anyway, your, your, your cops are out there, and they say, well, we got all these laws, which, by the way, there's so many laws, millions, literally millions of laws in this country, uh, that there's no possible way anybody could ever know all of them. Uh, and the thing is, the cops don't know the laws, uh, but, but they pretend like they do. Uh, <laughs> and if you speak up and you say, hey, that's not a law, then they're going to start harassing you. Oh, so you're a lawyer now, are you? You know all about the law, huh? Uh, yeah, yeah. We, we've seen it a number of times on uh, many, many times on all the videos. But if you got rid of the people creating the laws, then those cops wouldn't have that to fall back on as their excuse for doing horrible things to you. But they do. Uh, and, and, and they have that. And, and people beg for that kind of stuff. The same people that are begging for, uh, you know, the, the lockdowns to continue, the masks to be worn, the fact that you got to go out there and vote and have your vote. If you don't vote, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> 
<laughs> so so it so it all trickles down and, and and from from the government in the first place. And it all comes also back to also all comes back to one simple phrase. The belief in authority is the root of all evil. And it is. And just take it from that. Uh, if you believe in the authority of the government, the goonerment, as I prefer to call them nowadays, the goonerment, because they're all goons. Um, uh, so if you believe in the, the authority of them over you, you are, you are, this, this is where it all stems from. Your, your belief in their authority, uh, so, so that, you feel that you got to put somebody in charge of you to run your life and everybody else's life uh, <laughs> the way that these people that are supposed to represent you, which of course not do any have you seen any of them actually doing anything that represents you? I'm gonna have to believe. Most of you don't, or maybe they'll do like one or two little things that you think you like somehow. Uh, but the most most of the stuff they do is uh, voting for for war, voting for you know huge military budgets, uh, vo voting to to do all kinds of bad things to everybody. Um, uh, see now now Chloe, you're proving my point here. <laughs> you do. She Chloe says. One does not have to believe in authority for it to exist. That's incorrect. That's incorrect. If if everybody said, you guys have no power over us. You are not the ones in charge of our lives. You can't tell us how to run our lives. Every, it has to be a mass of people. A mass of people. Not not just uh, you, yourself, as like me, myself. I don't... I don't believe they have that authority, but enough other people do. The masses believe in that authority. So if the masses said, stood up and said, wait a minute, you guys are telling us to do all this stuff, who the hell are you? You're nobody. We, you know, put you here to, to, to serve us, and all you're doing is serving yourself, serving, serving the... Uh, the big military industrial complex, complex, the medical industrial complex, the banking complex, the, all, all these other people. You're not, you're not doing us uh, right. Yeah, because uh, <laughs> so if you you have to get to a tipping point where enough people say, no, this authority is not real. You you don't have the right to rule over me. Nothing. In, in your official documents, which is the Constitution, which they don't follow at all, says that you have the authority to do this, that, or those other things to me. You don't have it. Uh, and, and we are not going to allow you to, to tell us what to do anymore. But, see, it, it, it's, I, like I said, it's 90 plus percent of the people think that there is that authority. They believe in that authority. And, and, and so, because all those people believe in it, it exists in that way. <laughs> oh man! So I, I, I understand where you're coming from, but but that it's it's it, it's failed thinking. It's it's it's. I'm not picking on Chloe either. I love Chloe. Chloe's awesome. Uh, but 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 I'm trying to break her free, break her free from that from that from that mindset of. Uh, the state is there, and therefore we have to listen to them. Uh, yeah. I, I, you know, <laughs> and exactly, whose girl points out, laws don't prevent anybody from doing anything. If they did, would the prisons be overflowing? Which, of course, at this point, they're not overflowing because we go back to the corona nonsense and them letting all of the all the thugs out of out of prison. Whoa, what's going on there? I didn't touch my 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 mouse for a half hour. I guess. Well, I'm just sitting here yapping. I didn't talk, <laughs> so my screen went blank. Anyway, um, <laughs> but 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 uh, yeah. Ah. Oh. What what else can I say on that? Uh, I, it, 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 it's a it's a difficult thing to break to break that mindset. Oh, I do like your cookies, absolutely, Chloe. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, let's see. Christine says, Chloe is right in that authority's power, when unjust, still rules over over if people give them the power. Right, if give them, if people give them the power. And that's the thing, is people do give them the power. People do believe in authority. And uh, uh, let, let, me tell, let me give you a, a hypothetical example of a situation. Okay, and and suddenly, for whatever reason, there's a group of people, just say, what, ten people uh, on a certain place where there, there's no other people for around or that they can find, and they can't, they can't do anything. It's almost immediate that this, these people, this group of folk, are going to look at the rest of them and determine who is the leader. They will want somebody to be in charge. They want a leader. And, and, and I don't get that. I, I mean, if you want to have mutual cooperation between yourselves, that's good and great. But and, and not only will they want somebody to be the leader, somebody will want to be the leader. Maybe a couple of somebody's in that group of ten. Uh, <laughs> maybe three. And, and then there will be a little conflict going on there. No, I'm the leader. I'm the leader. Oh, okay, let's let the group decide who's going to lead them. And the group will decide. They're, they're going to look at this, this group of seven or eight people. Uh, the, the, the group of seven or eight people are going to look at the two that are saying they're, they're going to, they should be your leader, and they're going to pick one to be their leader. <laughs> because it's, it's, it's the way humans' minds think. And, and I, I don't, un, I don't, I don't understand it. I, I, I can't quite get over the whole, uh, uh, fact of how that, that, that goes, but it does, uh, work like that. That people want, to have a ruler ruling over them <sighs> and to be led and, 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 and to go down a certain uh, whatever path that leader suggests for them. Even if they look at that and they say, wait a minute, that's not the right path. I know we picked you as a leader to help us out and go this direction, but the direction you're going is leading us towards danger, towards bad things, towards bad things for us. Uh, and so you're no longer going to be our leader. They don't say that. Uh, they they keep on following this leader until they all wind up uh, in a bad situation. That, that's that, that, that's that's how that works. Uh, anyway, um, <laughs> all right. I guess I, I didn't really want to get into any of this here today. I, I didn't know what I was going to talk about. Uh, and, and again, uh, this is not really a leftovers show, uh, and there will be. No, there will be no more leftovers shows. I need I need a new a new idea for a new show of what I could talk about. Um, if anybody has ideas, you can uh, PM me and and say, hey, how about talk about this? How or uh, you know have this kind of a show? But I want it to be more conceptual than than uh, fact based. Uh, not not that I don't want facts to be involved, but but I don't want it to be based on. Uh, the ideas uh, or, or the re reported fact. I, I, yeah, yeah, I was going to do something like that before. Um, porn. That's a great one, Donna. I would love to do porn with you. Um, but that's another story. <laughs> so, so yeah, uh, other things that we could talk about that, that I may have knowledge of in some way or another. Um, so just going forward, if you have an idea for a show name uh, and and or uh, a show concept, and it doesn't have to be fixed, it can change uh, from week to week. And I and I, and I was kind of limited um, in what I could do with leftovers, being as it was designed for one specific purpose, which was to cover stories that I had lined up for, for Freaker's Ball and never got to. So, um, and I can do interviews. If people want that, I, I'm i willing to. Um, now, I don't know, like I said, I don't know how many people want to come on and have me interview them and then call them a dumbass because people don't generally typically like being called a dumbass. <laughs> 
<laughs> not that I would do that to everyone, <laughs> but 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 I could see it happening. Um, if you know, say for example, uh, your your Hansel got on here, got got on got on the horn here and started talking to me and telling me about how we need the government for this or drugs are bad, dad or or whatever. Um, uh, well, no, Christine, I, I I might well be saying it. <laughs> yeah, I might not. I might not. <laughs> but but I might. Um and anyway, so that's that that's kind of the idea or the direction I want to take this going forward. Um <laughs> I like that Frogger Frog comes up with uh you're up next, dumbass. <laughs> Oh, I, I would, uh, yeah, that would be awesome. Damn, 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 Donna. Damn you, Donna! Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, just something to think about. Uh, yeah. It's time for a change. Time for a change. Uh, here, so, it's happening. It's happening. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, um, I, I'm going to wrap it up with that. Uh, I, I, I think... Yeah, yeah, that'll do. Uh, so episode 76, the final episode of Grim Leftovers, although this was not really a Leftovers show. Uh, tomorrow at uh, 3 p.m., 3 p.m. Eastern, is Flash Somebody, uh, and possibly Grams, on his show, In a Perfect World. Uh, so so look forward to that and tune in for him. For him. Uh, he doesn't typically get enough listeners, in my view, and he does a pretty good show, uh, so I, I I like his show. And anyway, and then on uh, Wednesday there's nobody. Nobody's doing a show on Wednesday. So anybody who wants to do a Wednesday show, let me know. That's the only day of the week we don't have a show. Uh, so yeah, yeah. Okay, um, check the schedule on reallibertymedia.com for all the rest of the shows coming up throughout the week. Anything else? No, I think that's good. Talk to y'all later. Thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate you being all here. I love you. All right. Peace.